I started. Be amazing. Do, okay. Are we going to do a clap together? Yes, we are. Okay. It is how we'll, is how we'll do it. So are we all set? Yeah. yeah. All right. So on the count of three, we'll clap. So one, two, three. Perfect. <laughs> that was <laughs> kind of echoey. Ah, it's, it's totally fine. I saw those wave files jump, so I think it worked. Yeah, I'll be able to edit that together. But hello, everybody who's uh, joining us right now. Uh, f- uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Heather Alexandra. I am the content and community manager here at Double Fine. Um, and today uh, we are going to talk about some cool stuff because we just showed off a brand new trailer yesterday at the Xbox Game Showcase and a couple other things. I am joined by our art director, uh, Lizette Tider Montgomery, and then also by our senior concept artist, Emily Johnson. How are you both? Hi, we're doing good. I'm doing good. Lizette, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. You know, <laughs> yesterday was a good day. It was it a good was, day. It was. You all had to wake up a little earlier to watch the trailer than I did. Oh, yeah. I was up at, like, noon, and y'all were up at, like, <laughs> 9 Eight. in the morning or oh, something. Oh, 9. Yeah. Woo, 9. 9 is early for double fine. <laughs> I mean, compared to me, right? For me, it's the afternoon. I'm like, I've had my coffee. I'm pretty sad. And for, for all of y'all, it's the morning. It's one of the more interesting things about the remote situation right now is uh, I go to bed later now. <laughs> yeah because of everything time zones certainly affect your time schedule it's it's a little it's interesting and coronavirus um, yeah <laughs> yes that certainly affects your time schedule yeah at it's least fun. your sleep schedule <laughs> oh yeah sucks all sorts of energy yeah from you and everything else Um, Before we get into anything too specific today, I kind of wanted to go and kind of ask you both a little bit about your backgrounds to start off with, if that's okay. Sure. Um, Yeah, of course. So uh, let's start with you, Lizette, because I know a little bit about some of the stuff you've done, because I know that you worked on like Tiger Woods and The Simpsons and some other stuff. So for folks here in chat who who maybe don't know um, as much about uh, kind of what you did before Double Fine, would would you be willing to kind of give us a a little... uh, abbreviated version of kind of uh, what you were up to? Sure. Um, so um, I'll introduce myself to everyone. I'm Lisette Tucci Montgomery. Um, I'm the art director on Psychonauts 2. And I've been making games for, I think it's almost 20 years. Um, I started at a small independent company uh, called Page 44, and then I started working at EA a few years later, um, where I worked on uh, Tiger Woods for two years, Godfather, The Simpsons, and I was one of the first hires in Dante's Inferno, and I helped ship that game as well. And then I moved on to another studio called Backbone Entertainment, where we were more like a work-for-hire studio, and I got to work with Harmonix on Dance Central 3. And I think I also should jump Zombie Apocalypse, uh, a zombie shooter for Xbox um, there as well. And then I went to Ubisoft after that, and I worked on South Park. Uh, I also worked on mobile game for Transformers. And now I am at Double Fine, really enjoying my process and my team here at, um, on the Psychonauts project. That's, I mean, for that, when I, ever, when I hear that, it's like such a varied amount of... of... I think um, the sort of games and aesthetics that you're dealing with, because you're going from things where you're probably having to license or um, get clearance for like people, like actual people, yeah. And then you're and then you're moving on to um, something kind of with a well-known style, like The Simpsons, and then something with a very clear aesthetic, like Dante's Inferno, kind of kind of bloody. And, and all that. Um, yeah. Do, do you have any pro- Do you have any projects that like really stand out for you as as processes that you really enjoyed? I would say for the most fun I've had on a project was Dance Central Three because part of the like deal we had as co developers with Harmonix um, was that we had to take dance classes as a team. Really? Yes. So we had to take six months of dance classes on Thursdays. Um, and it was, I think, one of the best bonding experiences I had with the team. And it sort of, like, helped everyone kind of shed their egos because, I mean, we're all going to dance. We're all doing this together. We're all learning how to do this choreography to Beyonce. And, you know, we all got to learn different styles of dance together. And I think that sort of solidified us as a team. And I'm still very close with several people on that team as well. Um, One of my UI artists I really bond with, my UI artist I just hired, 
double fine stuff was on that project as well. And oh, really? See, I didn't know that. That's cool. And he worked on the gesture-based UI for Very that cool. as well. I'm working up the uh, the courage to participate in like yoga here. Oh my gosh, you should do yoga. It's so much it's, fun. It's, it's not quite the same as dancing, but maybe it'll maybe it'll loosen me up. It's a total Zen circle, and everyone is so just trying to hold their pose that we we don't <laughs> care what anyone else does. Yeah, <laughs> we'll it, it, it really doesn't matter. And not stop things from cracking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you'll both uh, talk me into it. Uh, I don't know. It's it's weird. It's weird coming in and being new and people being like, you can just come do yoga. And I'm like, oh my gosh, don't know about that. Well, the we, we welcome you with the warm arms and Thank we'll uh, make a full together. Oh boy. Um, so Lizette, I also just wanted to ask then, um, kind of, because you're, you're moving from spaces like EA and Ubisoft and a couple other spaces and now you're at Double Fine. I wonder if you could speak to um, if there was any particular difference or of uh, in, in process or feel moving into Double Fine coming off of uh, large spaces like that. Um, it's, like a, it's just like night and day from a cultural yeah. standpoint for me. Um, so, you know, where I was at Ubisoft San Francisco, it was, you know, Ubisoft is a big corporation. And so you kind of have these layers of hierarchy and, you know, people who, you know, you have to have very good reasons to speak to, you know. And so for me, Double Fine just felt like everyone is accessible. People are just interested in solving the cool creative problem. And you don't have to deal with these layers, right? And it's not to say that we didn't have creative fun at Ubisoft. It's just there's a corporate wrapper that kind of comes with that that we don't really have to deal with culturally. And just Double Fine's culture is just very fun and positive. You know, everyone is, works together really well. Um, very creatively driven. Um, just top talent studio. So, you know, it's just, it's like apples and oranges to me. Um, both of them create great games. They both have different cultures, though. And for me, I'm just really loving the vibe at, at, at Double Fine. It's loose. It's different. It's uh, I, I'm I'm so used to before I did anything like this before the journalism stuff. I did like contract work for AA studios, and that always felt like really desperate. Like it felt like people were really had things to prove, yep. and were really kind of um, scrapping f for every possible angle, like just fighting for indie mega space space booth and like. Okay. Yes, we'll we'll do this thing for PlayStation Mobile, just so we can have distribution on whatever platform we can. Um, and here, it, it feels uh, there's there's a certain amount of comfort here that I think is really cool. Yeah, I feel like you know a lot of decisions in, in some companies are, feel very like ROI driven. Like I want a return on investment. Where Double Fine's choices are: what is the coolest moment we can bring to the player? What is the greatest story we can create? And you know, with that kind of you know, questions come really fun answers. Um, and I think one of the great answers we um, came up with was with the level. And I think a lot of that came from Emily's concept uh, of you know, taking this Sergeant Pepper's yellow submarine idea and running with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll hop to Emily in a second. Let's avoid code names or anything if we can too, too much. Um, uh, Emily, let's, kind of, I, let's ask you uh, then kind of what your process was uh, heading, coming into Double Fine. I, I also, my secret here for the record is I'm doing this so I get to know all my coworkers. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you came in after the pandemic. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you haven't met any, so, of, any of us in real so, life. So I'm sitting here and, you know, Lee's telling me about like, oh, I worked on Superman or like Kevin's like, and then we moved to Japan or whatever. This is my secret way of getting to know everybody's um, like backgrounds and information too, which is really good. So Emily, what, what were you doing before Double Fine? Uh, well, I was uh, actually in uh, college. Um, I uh, I heard that there was internships at uh, Double Fine, and I, uh, I I jumped on that because I had played uh, Psychonauts and a whole bunch of other uh, early Tim Schafer games, and I was I was really um, I, I came from really wanting to do uh, story driven uh, games. Mm -hmm. And um, so there was an internship for Broken Age. This was in 2012. And, oh, wow. And uh, I got accepted, and I was so excited. And I fulfilled my internship. And then 
it was one of those times where it's like, sorry, we don't have money. Uh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, I want to stay here, please. Cause the, before, like, the, before the corporate inflush. Uh, yes, like, yes. This, this like was secret Phil Spencer money. Yes, this, this was when uh, it, was, it was a little, little tight in the budget. <laughs> a little and, bit. Um, so I went to a company called Crowdstar for a little while, which was okay. a mobile game. And it was, I worked on Covet. And I did beautiful uh, shoes and dresses and all these other things. <laughs> oh, see, I'm looking. I'm looking this up now. Oh, covet. <laughs> well, well, because you know, I, I was a journalist, right? So anytime, like, I'm an inter- like talking to people and people say something where I go, "Oh, what's the deal with that?" I always just look it up uh, mm-hmm. when I can. So I'm looking at this now. This uh, they had. They it's a- based, it says based in California and in Dublin, Ireland. Oh, uh, yeah. That that that's 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 for, I think for like. Avoiding taxes. Or Interesting. Something. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, it was in in uh, Berlin game, and at the time, I think they've moved since then. And I was there for a little while, and um, I I learned a lot there. And uh, then uh, Broken Age was still going on, and uh, actually, oh, it didn't it didn't stop. It kept going. no, yeah, it kept going after my internship, <laughs> and. <laughs> And uh, then Lee Petty actually uh, uh, reached out to me. He's like, hey, you, you want to come back and uh, continue working as a concept artist? And I was like, tell me when I should quit. <laughs> uh, and I went over to Double Fine again. And uh, they since then uh, hired me full time. And I have uh, since then worked on um, uh, Costume Quest 2, cool. all the remasters, uh, Headlander. Uh, a whole bunch of a whole bunch of other things, and I've been on Psychonauts for the full the full breadth of Psychonauts, pretty much, and also oh yeah, I worked on Rhombus of Ruin a whole bunch. Oh cool, yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's really cool because I, I think uh, talking to everybody, there's been such a range of experiences. I've had people who have just been like, and then I came in on ride and then did this or people like, I don't know, some people were like, and then I was here 40 years ago. <laughs> like, it's like, it's a lot. It's very cool to see, um, just the range of, uh, time that people have, uh, been spending at the company. Um, because we're, we, we only have so much time. I think Lizette has a heart out at the top of the hour. So I actually want to just kind of shift gears pretty quickly, if that's okay, to talk about some of the stuff that we showed off, uh, yesterday at the Xbox game showcase, which of course is, uh, kind of all that psychedelia that Lizette was talking about before. Um, so Psychonauts, levels with different themes and feelings and uh, gimmicks and anything like that. And I was wondering if uh, either of you, if we, if we could talk just about how that uh, process comes about. Um, I know probably a lot of it is born off of um, initially Tim's writing and seeing what the initial concept is and how, and how to uh, pull it out from there. But uh, with this particular level, I'd be curious to know... Um, how, how it came to be. Yeah, how do we how do we get how do we narrow down the aesthetics? Like what are the references that we're looking for? What are the what what were any of the weird hurdles that we came up against? Um anything I can, would be great. I can talk to sort of the early the early times of yes. uh, when it was uh, pie in the sky, blue sky everywhere. We could figure we could do anything we wanted to. Um Tim took a, a bunch of us in a room uh, and we did uh, brainstorming where uh, people would write down on cards like uh, uh, um, like worlds and uh, mm-hmm. just just pretty much anything. It could be like, oh, what if the world was made out of toilets? What if the world was uh, nothing but uh, plants? What if the world was made out of pasta? And, and just sort of like people would write down that on cards. And along with that, there was another category of like, uh, you know, uh, brain uh, brain dispositions like, uh, yeah. hey, this, this person has suffered loss or this uh, brain is dying or just, just, just anything anyone came up with, right? Right, like they're really anxious or something. Yeah, like yeah, what, whatever the, the thing that is troubling them or what, what's going on with their brain chemistry, essentially. And um, someone wrote down synesthesia as uh, one of the, uh, the, the cards. And I remember thinking, oh man, synesthesia is so cool as a phenomenon. And in case you don't know what synesthesia is, it's um, where uh, 
two things, two wires have uh, crossed in your brain a little bit. So uh, some people will perceive numbers as colors, like five is always red and four is always yellow. And they just, and um, also smells will yeah. remind people of like sounds. And I was gonna say sounds as well. And I had a friend who had like oral synesthesia. Oh, which was kinda cool, what was it? Which, um, I don't know, but I remember they said that my voice was pink-ish or like reddish, oh, which was kind of cool. Really cool. <laughs> um, which actually, this brings me to a question that somebody was asking because uh, you know people were asking uh, some questions in the lead up to this, and they were asking then because uh, I think it's it was kind of known that this world was is inspired by synesthesia. If there were an, um, any experiences that uh, either of you had had with mm. with people who had had that or maybe your own personal experiences or, or, or kind of things that you referred to when thinking about synesthesia for designing what like um, the aesthetic or the look of this level would be. Um, um, I, I, Lizette, you, you take this one. Yeah, I think I actually kind of, you know, once you came up, like I heard about the concept and I came on the project a little later after some of the concepts had solidified. So we were trying to explore what we could do with that concept. And I think it really started with, you know, like most things at Double Fine, talking to your coworkers about an idea, um, and then people sharing stories. And so I think one of our, our you know, engineers, who was no longer with at the time, but she has synesthesia, and she was kind of describing how that affects her. And so I started, you know, we started researching and talking about that, and then the concept of like, you know, your senses kind of being mixed up. Um, was a really interesting th concept to think about visually as well. And I think that sort of kind of led the spark, you know, personal experience, sharing stories. And I think that's how a lot of really great ideas come from Double Fine. Does that end up guiding something like, I don't know, like I'm spitballing here, right? Uh, does that end up guiding like something like color palette then in terms of like, I don't know, like with this level, did you start using only one color and, then, and does the palette expand or anything like that? Do you ever think about I think design that in that sort of sense? later through like the extra some of the conversations between me Emily and the team um like the single color concept came a little later I think what we were really interested in was the fact that this moat this brain in the jar has been in this jar since the 60s so it gave us like a very key time point and aesthetic to kind of go for yeah, yeah so it's a real clear touch we immediately went to yellow submarine and so that's when I think Emily's concepts just really started taking shape yeah, actually, uh, when I uh, first saw the synesthesia card out there, I I, I didn't want to do it, honestly. I was, uh, because synesthesia is like this wonderful thing. And with uh, video games, uh, it's, we're only working with like um, uh, sound and, and visuals and uh, like the some of the, the real meat of synesthesia is like taste and smell and, and touch and I I I was like, wow, I'm intrigued, but man, I I hope someone does a good job at that. <laughs> well, and, good news, uh, Emily. Well, good news, you get to do it. Uh, no, it, I yeah, I was I was given that challenge, um, and uh, I I think actually a lot of the uh, the Peter Max and Yellow Submarine stuff really did. Um, help uh, uh lead those uh lead that <laughs> that uh synest i hope that synesthesia can be seen from it a little bit from it yeah i mean i guess it's tricky right because s some some notion of what it, it probably is to experience something like synesthesia is so ineffable and kind of um hard to venture upon because it's like a feeling right uh, and you can evoke certain feelings in a player um, with your visuals, but, you know, it's especially, it's especially hard to, you know, if you're not, you know, synesthetic or something, trying yeah. to capture an experience. Um, were there any other, do you know if there were any other like reference points that you had besides Yellow Submarine? Cause I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of like psychedelic painters or like artists that I know now. And there's like, I knew some people and like, I used to go to Cape Cod and there was this guy called Joey Mars who still does stuff. And like, I, I feel like that's still, an art style that people get a lot of mileage of today, just in certain niche spaces. Yeah, I think we started looking in that general area. It wasn't just yeah. Yellow Submarine. I know, yeah. you know, there's a lot of psychedelic rock. We looked at a lot of like rock concerts from the 60s. 
Uh, my camera's not on. I have like one on my wall. Uh, it's a really good example of it. There's like a little mix of Art Deco and funk, and like the fonts are very specific, and the shape language is very unique. And we were, I know Emily, some of our Emily's early tests and our early tests were trying to mix photographs with, you know, that sort of graphic look. Essentially, the whole goal was to try to create a sense of surrealism in some way so that we could use whatever senses we could evoke uh, with the art as we could. Because, you know, we can't obviously make you smell or taste something, but we can make you remember what a, a smell may be like by using a shape and a color. So mm -hmm. we started developing a way to sort of depict this um, through the tools we had. Do you remember I, how, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, 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 I just wanted to say, I was looking uh, earlier about uh, with, uh, in terms of artists, Kandinsky, he, I, I believe that he actually did have a synesthesia, so he did like do a lot of paintings that um, did ev evoke that. And I, I, I actually, uh, because this was such like a, a I, I wanted to include all the, the like tactile sort of stuff, I uh, brought in a, a bunch of felt and started oh, cool. uh, uh, cutting out shapes and, and putting, just making shapes that were very Kandinsky-like just to start the process. For folks who are listening who maybe don't know Kandinsky, it's uh, Vasily Kandinsky, who's, um, he's a Russian, like, abstract artist, right, is who you're referring to? Yes, yes, of course. Perfect. With, the, with, weird, with, with dots and lines and colors yeah. and shapes. It's, it's really wonderful. I, I, yeah. I, I almost wanted it, uh, like, early on to be almost this just totally abstract world, but uh, we, we uh, sort of wanted to do a little bit more yellow submarine as yeah, the of course. time went on. I was, I was asking um, what was going on then in terms of, you know, because we have this concept of synesthesia. When does that, some, you know, start to come together with a concept of music in general, concerts, bands, right? Because the conceit, the way that Tim kind of has always uh, talked about it um, has always been... Um, you know, all, all the senses are coming together. He's bringing the band back together, as, as, right? Uh, how, how soon was that concept kind of locked in, and how did that affect what, what you sort of started to design? Um, well, uh, at Double Fine, uh, we end up wearing uh, many hats. So I had actually done a, a storyboard pass. Uh, uh, I, I end up doing a lot of story beat boards. They're like not quite storyboards, but it's just sort of like, and then this happens, and then this happens. And I know that we wanted to have a, a, a band and a, a musical concert. And um, it's, it started uh, ending up in the vein of like, oh, we need to get the band back together. That's going to be the, um, the point of this level. So um, through uh, tons of uh, help from the team and, and Tim, we, we ended up sort of all deciding that we wanted to um, get, get the band back together, get the senses back together, essentially. How does it... Because I guess I'm thinking about psychonauts in general, right? And I've, I've, I don't think I've ever had the opportunity to work around a game with so many different uh, kind of visual touchstones. Um, how does that affect your work as an artist or, um, you know, Lizette, on, on a higher level thing, jumping from concept to concept? Um, does it, is it, is each level kind of an opportunity to kind of reinvent and, and try something new? Does it ever feel daunting. I'd be kind of curious to know about that. <laughs> Both. I would say all yeah. of the above. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Of course. It's exciting because you're like, I've never seen this before. I want to help, you know, I want to be a part of the process to help figure this out because it's new and it's fresh and nobody's seen it. And, you know, there's, it's, there's something to be said about creating that in game space where you see a lot of things that are, mm -hmm. you know, clones. Um, and then you have the other challenge of holy crap, <laughs> how are you going to make this? Yeah, how do you get it done? <laughs> it's like essentially making like 10 video games in one. Yeah, because it feels so distinct, right? Yeah, every level really had to go through its own look development. You know, usually you do look development as a phase and you sort of set this phase for the rest of the game through a shorter period of look development, but every level required its own stage of look development as its level phase so that's sort of the fun and daunting part does that does i mean obviously that 
that leads to good things. Does that ever feel um, like, you know, you go from one thing to another and, and like the wheels take a while to turn at the start because you're kind of developing these touchstones to begin with? Or do you really hit the ground running, you feel? I think it depends on one, Tim's writing and two, the team's ability to wrap their mind around this like coalescence of concepts sure and a lot of that comes from a collaboration with design a collaboration with engineering you know everyone's kind of doing small development tests to prove out that if we can even do this um one of the things we did for our levels was a sort of like a um, material world development where we just make little pretty corners so we could figure out if the look would look great um, right and so you're just sort of, along the way, you're just kind of trying to find proof of life, you know? You're looking for, like, is this a real thing? Can we make this thing come to life? And that's sort of how we handle the process. How often do you find, maybe in that process, that it doesn't lead to where you'd like? Do you ever have to just throw out the baby with the bathwater? Yeah. At some point, you certainly like, do. I cannot put this puzzle together, and I can't afford to keep wasting our team's time on it. So... Mm -hmm throw it out let's start over um but you try not to do that too much of course <laughs> yeah of course that wears down on morale as well yeah that totally makes sense um uh i'm gonna take a question here because i know lizette you have to end up leaving very shortly um uh someone's asking um yeah, they say that they're an artist who trained for television, animation, and comics, and they were wondering if either of you could talk about some aspects of uh, game art or game concept art that you think might be uh, unique for, for kind of the considerations of, of our particular field compared to maybe other fields. Um, I can speak to that a little bit. Um, I went to school uh, at San Jose State for animation illustration, and the preferred... Uh, alleyway was, hey, you guys should go to Walt Disney or Pixar or, or any of those animation companies. That was mm -hmm. the, sort of the track that we were on. And um, uh, when I went to Double Fine, uh, it was just sort of like learning on the spot. And um, I, I, I haven't actually worked in, in, in sort of a more feature film, but... Uh, it's uh, the turnaround for the artwork is uh, very, very quick and very fast. Yeah. And uh, I have a friend at Pixar. It sounds intense. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, so I, th I think a lot of the art that I end up doing is more informative about um, how, how everything fits together and, um, and I, I do do those, like, uh, <laughs> I always look at those, like, art books for the, the Pixar stuff, and I'm like, this is kind of concept art, but this is sort of for, like, marketing and people like art. So yeah. uh, a lot of the work I end up doing is kind of ugly, but it as long as it gets the uh, point across and I'm able to give it to a modeler or if it's a, a storyboard or something, it, it's, it's, just, it's just about informing the next person in the line more so than, hey, the, the textures and the render of this is so pretty. This highlight is so, like, <laughs> mwah. Um, yes. uh, so uh, we don't get as much time to sort of finish the art, I, I, as you will. So that I, I think there's a little bit of difference in that sense. Makes sense. Uh, Lizette, did you have anything to add to that maybe before you had to, uh, to head out? Sure. Yeah, I, I think Emily is also echoing like, you know, there are some parallels between film and games and skill sets you need. And I think concept art does overlap in several ways. However, the needs for games are so specific because, you know, there's the additional element of interactivity. Mm -hmm. And so that requires that we have to think about things in a 3D space. We have to collaborate with the designers on functionality and how that could be communicated through visual art. So I think there is a different specialty there. Um, but I do yeah. think that what's great about the process of Double Fine is that we're not trying to make um, just, you know, a static, you know, passive image. We are making these really interactive uh, 
have very trippy moments, as you have seen, if you've watched the trailer. Um, <laughs> so that requires like a completely different collaborative skill set. So we have to be quick, fast, and dirty. We have to iterate really quickly. We have to problem mm -hmm. solve. And we can't get into these like time sucks where you know we're spending five days trying to make the perfect render. You know, we just right. You can't you can't be too precious. No, necessarily. You can't be too precious. And you know, thankfully, we don't really need to be. It's nice. It's good. I I guess then. I mean, I'm thinking about considerations that we might have specifically, especially as as in terms of. Uh, because we're making a game and something that's interactive. How do we approach, I don't know if there had been discussions, I'd be curious to know about this. How do we approach a, a level like this that's so dependent on, on, on color or things like that when we know, for instance, that we might have to make you know, accessibility afford, affordances for you know, people with um, color blindness or things like that? Are those discussions that uh, we end up having in, in concept arting phases, does that ever come up? Um, one thing that I, I always try to do is um, solve things in value, and value being like uh, the really dark darks and the really light lights. So right. no matter what um, color is present, you could still see what's going on because we're not trying to to solve like uh, the the color issues. As long as you can see depth with a, a black and white uh, yes. view, I'm always like a turning. Uh, uh, I have like a grayscale thing in Photoshop that turns the colors grayscale. So if you can see it in grayscale, it, it's working. And if, um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really good way to kind of put it because um, like once the level was later in development um, and we knew we had this sort of single color scheme, you know, accessibility was a conversation that, you know, we were all very concerned about. Yeah. Um, so you know, once you're, we you know, once the enough meat was on the bone and things were a little, you know, closer to being, you know, brought to a shippable level, we started looking at images of the level with various like eye color blindness filters on. Like you could see what someone who can't see green um, would see. You would see what someone who can't see red would see. And so that requires some like little changes and tweaks to color value in order to do what Emily is talking about, where you know. You, I can add orange next to green, and someone yeah. who sees that sees orange and green, but someone who only sees green will notice the orange. So you kind of had to, and they would see it as a darker gray value. So mm -hmm. it's sort of this, it was using the technology we have to figure out how can we make sure that everyone can see this, um, and what colors can we kind of you know manipulate to get there. Yeah, I always think about that stuff because... Um, my father sometimes likes to play games, but he's colorblind. So I remember once he was playing, um, it was Jonathan Blows the Witness, which is a super smart game, very cool puzzles in there. But there are definitely some puzzles in there that require you to be able to see colors. There are a couple puzzles in that game that actually require you to hear pitches. Um, oh yeah, I remember that. I, I, right. I, I did know that he got around that by you don't have to solve the color Every, or yeah. sound thing. Yeah. Is that um, correct? I, th I think I, I, it's been so long since I played that game. I played it when I was a freelancer of reviewing, which was a whole process. I beat that game and then I had to email them to be like, did I actually beat your game? Because <laughs> it's such a, such a mysterious, strange thing. But I remember the process of, um, of going through that. And I don't think you have to do everything, but I remember my father was playing that game and he reached a couple of trouble points. So whenever, whenever I think about, uh, like levels or color spectrums, especially this, right? You know, I want him to be, I want him to be able to play <laughs> Psychonauts too. And I think uh, it's always reassuring to hear about the the background um, behind the scene processes that ensure as many people can do that as possible, which is always good. Oh, side note, you know what? Somebody just, somebody asked another question and I just got an answer for it in a, in a DM, a totally random tangent. Somebody's <laughs> asking, somebody's asking, do we have any plans to put Rhombus of Ruin on the Ocul Oculus Quest? The answer is not right now. Sorry. <laughs> Carol just sent me a, a DM and was like, I have an answer for that, which is good. Um, you know what? Here's an easy question too. How do you both feel now that it's out there? Just the level, just feel oh good. Oh my gosh, no one's asked me that. That is a, <laughs> how do you feel? Yeah, uh, right? Yeah, I know. Uh, my, I was like, huh. I mean, it's just, just yesterday. <laughs> it's a blur. It, it's a blur. It feels like a year ago already. 
Yeah, I had shit I did, like, after work yesterday, say, like, sit down and celebrate. Yeah. Because it's just, um, it's it's the next day, and I'm already like, what's the next thing? Let's, let's, what, next challenge, please. You know? Yeah. So it's important, I think, for moments like this, when you know you're working hard and your team is doing amazing things, um, that you slow down and let them feel that acknowledgement. Yeah. It's, I guess, uh, like... I haven't like necessarily processed it because I've been like looking at this level for like playing it again and again and again and and trying to get all the the bugs and it looking pretty and feeling good and um I I feel like it like I I've I, it's like the back of my hand and I, I know what's going on so that now that it's out in the world it's it just it's I don't know I mean, I hope people enjoy it. I guess that's 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 what I feel. I'm enjoying I'm enjoying <laughs> reading the reactions. You know, I think that that's yeah. part of the part of the the fun of being in this medium and doing this craft is people you know get to enjoy your art in a way that a lot of people don't. You know, so for me, the real reward is seeing how the fans react to things. If it was good or bad. You know, I think the whole point is that somebody's interacting with my art. Well, I mean, I think the good news is that people walked away with a lot of excitement. I think, uh, it, it, I think it's such a difference from like dark teeth Lobato or whatever, <laughs> right? That like just seeing just seeing the range of it is really really cool. Um, I swear to God, I'm not saying this because uh, like I work here, but. It, but one of the things I always liked about Psychonauts is is that range, right? Is the way that it can incorporate, um, like a the themes of a level into the spatial design or the world design, and I think that provides a lot of cool opportunities that you might not have necessarily if you're limited to, you know, say we were doing like a hard military game or something mm -hmm. like that. Which, which to be to be perfectly clear, like. I'm, that's not a knock against that genre or people working on those games because I know people who like <laughs> make the models for weapons in those games and they're incredibly talented, right? Um, but Psychonauts pro provides such a wide potential range of kind of things that you can deal with that I think being able to show folks something so different was really, really cool. Yeah, I've... Oh, I, I just I I feel really lucky that uh, I can I can uh, do concept art for a level about gross teeth stuff and a level uh, about uh, this psychonautical nineteen uh, sixties uh, Peter Max Yellow Submarine level. Were, and, and were you in also the same t like time frame essentially? Were you also on the? The teeth stuff, then? Yeah, I, I, um, I wasn't one of the the main uh, three. The, sure. The, uh, our our levels are usually uh, a concept artist, a, a designer, um, and a uh, world builder. Um, and uh, I, I wasn't one of the main three, but I did assist uh, uh, Gigi, uh, who cool. was the part of the main three on uh, Lobato. Ah, that's. Very different. One of the fun things about our process is um, it's very collaborative. And so if, you know, you're the concept artist assigned to a level, it doesn't mean you're the only person who has to work on it. Um, so if, for example, someone's like, I have this concept is busting me. I can't. Please help. <laughs> so we can, like, run in and do an art jam and, like, just do a bunch of sketches and, and the you know, just do a quick brainstorm and just get all these ideas out and just give that to someone and be like, here, hopefully you're unstuck. And so I think that's one of the fun things about our level of development. It isn't just, you know, it has to be my ideas. It's everyone's ideas and we're all trying to solve these really complex visual and narrative problems. Um, but I think that's also why the project is so fun. Um, yeah, art, art in isolation is fun, but it's like way, way more fun when I... Uh, talk to uh, my fellow concept artists, Lizette and Levi and Bagel and Gigi and and uh, Scott and Peter Chan. It's just, we just all like uh, uh, play off of each other and it's, it's really uh, amazing and wonderful. Yeah, it's, the collaboration has been cool to see. Um, uh, the position that I, I occupy get, 
means that I get to kind of hover around and, and spy on everything, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is very, which is very cool. Um, and seeing where people, um, kind of swing in to, to cover X, Y, Z thing or, or, um, shoot different ideas around is, is really, really nice. Uh, which I think, I think if we were in a place that was maybe larger, things would feel like way more siloed, right? You, there would be just, this is your department or this is, you are on, you are on Hearthstone. You don't talk to such and such person or whatever. Um, yeah, I think at a, at a lot of companies, it is sort of like that, that big uh, divide of like, right. you will never talk to a programmer. You are an you, artist, you stay here. And yeah, you're in building two west while somebody is in yeah. uh, complex C east. Yeah, and, and when when we were in the office, uh, any time I would propose something, there was a, a programmer that was, like, on the other side of me, and I'd be like, hey, Aaron, we want to do this. And he'd be <laughs> like, no, why are you doing this? And then we'd figure it out. <laughs> so uh, it's nice to, to have that collaboration with all the, the people. Yeah, I think so. It, it's our strength, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> some people are asking a couple questions and the answer is, uh, some of these things we can't answer. Um, some people, which, which isn't me, somebody just kind of added me in the discord, which isn't me like being coy. It's more just like, sometimes people hop into these conversations and they're like, can you tell us the whole plot of Psychonauts? And I'll be like, no, we can't tell you the whole <laughs> Do you have a, plot you have a day, a day or two? <laughs> Listen, I, I just, I just learned all of it. <laughs> which was very good. It was very good. I was like, I should probably learn all of the story because I knew some, obviously, uh -huh. from, from everything that we've been focusing on. And then uh, I, I, I saw some sort of video breakdown with Tim. And uh, it's fun. I'll say that much. Uh, mm -hmm. But we can't, we can't be like, if somebody's like, what's the biggest twist in the game? I'll be like, well, you're going <laughs> to have to wait and figure it out. Oh, I you really don't you. want to spoil it. You know, this is a single player experience and you're gonna, you know, you're gonna get to do it for once the first time. Don't, is it, don't There's do some stuff that people know. There's a mole in the Psychonauts. There's mm. cool levels. That's, that's all you need to know. We'll get there. It's coming, it's coming soon. We, we, you know, we had the pandemic. We had um, Microsoft picking us up so that we can do X, Y, Z thing, but it's coming. It, and, and so the wait will be worth it. I, I'm, I'm certain of it. Um, the boss fights, yes, uh, which I've, I've slowly seen those come together too, which is cool. I think uh, Becca talked a little bit about some of the programming of those maybe two weeks ago now, which is really cool. Um, I want to see if anybody in chat has any final questions because I don't want to keep you all too, too much longer. So if anybody else has any final questions about art or about what you've seen, um, Put that out there. Somebody asked about the Rhombus of Ruin question. We're not putting it on the Oculus Quest right now. How old is Lobato? Uh, very. I don't know. <laughs> um, that's a that's a good question. Lobato maybe doesn't even know how old Lobato is. Who knows? I don't know how Le how old Lobato is. Only Tim knows. <laughs> um, see if we have any final questions. Uh, but otherwise, uh, this is good. Uh, uh, these aren't real questions. You, we can't, we can't talk about your weird, <laughs> you're like, weird, you're like fandom speculations. We can't, yeah, you, you it's wanna, good. You want to experience it. It's going to be good. Oh, here's a, here's like a nice light one run. Uh, do you have any characters or, or um, particular things from the game that you've really enjoyed just kind of doodling or like iterating on? Uh, <sighs> oh, also who came up with the field mobile? Oh, um, I did. I, I wanted to have a, uh, a VW type van because it's very nineteen uh, sixties uh, music festival. And yes. Tim was the one who wrote the field mobile. <laughs> so um, that's that's a uh, that's that's a Tim thing. If there's a pun, it probably came from Tim. Oh yeah, yeah. It, Tim is a. Uh, uh, loves the puns <laughs> so much um everybody says of course it was tim yeah of course it was <laughs> you, know, you know who he is um i can oh, say that there's of, uh, yeah. favorite things that i have because I, I love all of it but i think for me there are moments in this game that i think people are gonna love and i think that's what keeps me excited is you know certain moments that i know we have to finish or we've done that are going to be awesome yes the 
Maligula dance scene will be great. I don't know if that's a thing. <laughs> For all I know, it could be. There could be a giant monster dance scene. Yeah, Anyways. monster dance. The monster dance scene. The, the, the uh, we did. We did it. The chore- the choreography. The yeah. intense choreography. Yeah. Intense. It was very intense. <laughs> it's we, very did, we did the dance central thing with uh, Lizette. <laughs> we did. We did it with Lizette. She and we and we did it. Um, so you know what? I th- I think that's you know. Uh, I think I think we're in a good shape. I think um, I'm going to end up talking with um, maybe some more level designers and things like that. Um, but I don't want to keep y'all too too long today because um, it's Friday and there's other it's stuff Friday. Going on. What was that? Oh, that's me saying it's Friday. Oh, <laughs> for a minute, uh, for a minute, I was like, who was that? That was me. It's you. It is Friday. So um, I want to thank you both for. For talking, if people have any other questions and you want to ask them around, uh, I mean, we lurk in here, but um, we might not be able to answer them right away. But thank you all for for coming and, li- and listening in, Lizette, Emily. This was very very enjoyable. In the future, they won't. Uh, I'll, I'll just have microphones in like my office, and it'll be like so much more chill. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just I'll just have like candy and like microphones. It'll be good. Um, and we'll see each other. We will. We'll see each other. It's oh. it's so it's so hard to do this uh, across the country. It's so it's so, so strange. I miss being in our jam with all my artists in the room. Yeah, that is. I, I miss that too. I'm very excited to move on over. But I I think that's where we'll call it. And then um, just for our own purposes, uh, we can save our audio. And if you can export that to me, and you can probably just send it to me over Slack. Do we need super, a super super good a, an end clap? No. Um, <laughs> If I, if I, I mean, we could, but I know, I know where the start is, so I'll be able to slate okay. it up okay. if I need Every, to. Everything's great then. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've produced a podcast or two in my time. <laughs> um, well, so thank you, Heather. It was very lovely you. talking with you. And thank of you, course, Lizette. I talk with Lizette thank all the time. Lizette. Yes. It's great talking with everyone. Yes. And thanks everyone for, for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. It's always nice to uh, hear more from more and more people. Um, and we'll go from there. Uh, so goodbye, everybody. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye, and I'm actually going to hang up. Uh, I'll beat you to it. One, two, three. Bye. (laughs) Bye.